Okay, it's yours, Charlie. All right. Hello. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our final speaker today. Uh, Gant, please tell us about your living history. All right. Let me see if I can figure out how to use this. All right. Can you all see that? Yes. Great. So I want to thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity to tell you all about my random walk towards becoming a biophysicist. I grew up in the early 80s in Park Ridge, Illinois, a northwestern suburb of Chicago. It's actually only about 30 or so minutes from downtown, depending on the traffic. Having grown up with the forest preserve as my backyard and in such close proximity to Lake Michigan, I've always been captivated by biology. My interest in biology was given a very solid foundation at Maine South High School, um, where I also pursued my interest in music, drama, and swimming. Uh, during this time, the high school years, I fell in love with and excelled in biology and physics. By the end of my high school career, I knew that I wanted to study biology and music in college. I was also interested in being a pre-med student so that I could potentially pursue a career as a medical doctor. But as you'll see, uh, paths tend to change. So before I tell you about my college years, I want to quickly take a detour to Perdido Key, Florida. My random walk towards biophysics would be incomplete otherwise. Because my father's sister lived near Al uh, Birmingham, Alabama, I was fortunate enough to be able to spend a week every summer in Perdido Key between the ages of about 7 to 21. So Perdido Key is a barrier island in Northwest Florida and Southeast Alabama with sugar white sands on the Gulf of Mexico. Swimming and playing in the ocean uh, there exposed me to marine biology and ecology at a young age. I distinctively remember swimming above fields of living sand dollars and sea stars and being amazed watching the former eat the latter. I also became obsessed at this time with sharks as there were many tiger and hammerhead sharks in the area. I actually wanted to become a great white shark biologist, uh, but my mother quickly disabused me of that career path. Ultimately, the time that I spent with my family in Perdido Key was my inspiration, really, to study biology. So towards the end of my high school years, I fell in love with a small liberal arts college in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, named Grinnell College. I decided to apply and attend Grinnell College for three main reasons. I wanted to study biology, I wanted to study music composition, and I wanted to continue swimming at, competitively at the collegiate level. So uh, being in the middle of a cornfield off of I-80 was a little challenging for me socially, but it afforded me the time to really dive deep into my studies. I benefited quite a bit from attending a small liberal arts college. There were no requirements outside of your major. Hands-on active learning was emphasized, and it was a very accepting and liberal community. I fell in love with virology during this time, thanks to my advisor, Dr. Bruce Foyles, who unfortunately passed away in May 2022. During my senior year, I performed research in Dr. Voyles' lab, studying starvation-induced gene expression in a acinetobacter, which is a ubiquitous soil organism, soil-dwelling bacterium. At the time, I wasn't really interested in cell biology, and I'm sure I didn't know what biophysics was. I actually wanted to become a virus hunter at the CDC or a viral immunologist. So by the time my end at, uh, at Grinnell was coming to an end, uh, I started, I wanted, to, I was trying to decide between going to graduate school for virology or music theory and composition. So to help me find the right path, I wanted to determine if biomedical research was a career that I could see myself pursuing for the long haul. When I studied abroad in Scotland during my junior year, I became interested with the viral gene therapy research being performed in the lab of Dr. John Engelhart at the University of Iowa. In particular, I wanted to learn more about how human adeno-associated viruses could be engineered uh, to be viral vectors for potentially treating diseases like cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy. Uh, Dr. Engelhardt helped me get a sum summer undergraduate research fellowship in order to be able to live in Iowa City and work with his research group. This 
This experience convinced me that I wanted to pursue graduate studies in virology and ultimately a career as a biomedical researcher. So because of my experiences at Grinnell, I was uninterested in the cytoskeleton for some reason. I also was really uninterested in DNA viruses like herpes viruses. I wanted to study and cure HIV. I wanted to deal with um, AIDS. And uh, however, I also remember as a college student being fascinated with the process of protein transport, how microtubule motor proteins walked around in the cell carrying their cargo. So during my interview visit, I actually met with Dr. Gary Borisi, who strongly suggested that I consider working at the interface of virology and cell biology, which I had never thought of at the time. I'll never forget him sitting me down and telling me that viruses and bacteria hijack the cell cytoskeleton to move within and between cells. And that was it. I was hooked. Uh, on movies of Listeria monocytogenes, a bacterium rocketing around the cytoplasm on actin comet tails changed my life completely. I fell in love with live cell imaging, and that's what I've been doing for the rest of my time as a uh, biomedical researcher. I also fell in love with the cytoskeleton. I really remember in particular Gary's uh, quote, which was basically to paraphrase, you need to position yourself at the interface of at least two fields to be successful in this game. And this is a statement that more than any other has significantly influenced my scientific career. I decided to do my first rotation in Dr. Boris's lab on Listeria actin comet tail assembly, but I was still in love with the idea of becoming a virologist. So based on my interest in cellular virology, the chair of the department at the time, Dr. Pat Spear, suggested that I rotate through the lab of a newly hired assistant professor by the name of Dr. Greg Smith, who worked on how herpes viruses hijack microtubule motor proteins to transport their capsids in the axons of infected neurons. I was the first graduate student to join the Smith lab, and I remember buying the lab's first restriction enzymes. So uh, it was quite an exciting place and time to uh, be doing what we were doing. It was a whirlwind four-year PhD, during which I helped identify the very large tegument protein VP12 as the key determinant of microtubule-dependent intracellular herpes virus capsid transport. Another major influence on my trajectory towards becoming a biophysicist was Dr. Sarah Rice, who was hired as an assistant professor in the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology at Northwestern towards the, the end of my time as a graduate student there. Dr. Rice introduced me to the biochemistry and structural biology of motor proteins and helped me investigate how BP12 interacted with microtubule motor proteins. While I absolutely loved working on host cell virus interactions, I remained obsessed with cell biology, and in particular with the microtubule cytoskeleton. This ultimately led me to taking a postdoc at Columbia University in the lab of Dr. Greg Gunderson, an expert in microtubule dynamics and cell polarity. And so, uh, <clears throat> I went to Dr. Gunderson's lab to study microtubule post-translational modifications and microtubule stability. But I quickly became distracted by research being performed by a fellow postdoc, Dr. Edgar Gomes, in the lab on actin-dependent uh, movement of nuclei in migrating fibroblasts. So you can see here a, a fibroblast with the red labeled um, actin cytoskeleton, and here's the nucleus in uh, blue. In particular, I wanted to understand better the molecular mechanisms underlying the physical coupling of the nuclear envelope and the cytoskeleton that was required for rearward nuclear movement during centrism orientation in migrating fibroblasts. I was fortunate enough to be awarded a postdoctoral fellowship by the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation to study how defects in nuclear cytoskeletal coupling may underline the neurological movement disorder dystonia, which would become a major focus of my research program moving forward. During my time at Columbia, uh, we worked very closely together with Dr. Howard Warman, shown over here in the very nice green shirt, um, who is an expert in nuclear envelope proteins and the human diseases caused by mutations in these proteins. Specifically, Dr. Warman introduced me to the fascinating world of nuclear laminopathies, which are tissue-specific human diseases caused by mutations in nuclear lamin proteins. Because of my experience at Columbia, I was able to land a faculty position at the Department of Genetic Cell Biology and Development in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. 
So I was hired by the University of Minnesota to be an associate, an assistant professor in that department. And I was particularly excited about uh, joining this department because I really wanted to find a model organism with which I could study nuclear movement during development. And I was attracted by the fact that the C. elegans Genetic Center would, would be on my floor. Initially, the focus of my independent laboratory was to investigate how nuclear movement contributed to directional cell migration and how defects in this process may under or influence the pathophysiology of early onset torsion dystonia. However, within the first year of my time at the University of Minnesota, the Schwartz Lab at MIT and the Coutet Lab at ETH in Zurich published the first crystal structure of the link complex. Uh, which was the molecular bridge responsible for physically coupling the nucleus and the cytoskeleton that I started studying while I was at Columbia. This structure revealed that the link complexes were formed by binding three outer nuclear membrane cache proteins to the domain interfaces of uh, trimeric inner nuclear membrane pr sun proteins. This important field-changing result strongly suggested to me that, the ma that a major key to our better understanding of the assembly of functional link complexes would necessitate being able to quantitatively measure protein-protein interactions within the nuclear envelopes of living cells. However, uh, not being able, uh, trained to be able to do this, I was extraordinarily fortunate to be able to team up and collaborate with Dr. Jochen Mueller, who is in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Minnesota, and a pioneer in the development of fluorescence fluctuation spectroscopy techniques, which enable you to basically measure the stoichiometry of protein-protein complexes in living cells. So not being trained as a biophysicist or in advanced quantitative imaging techniques and knowing that I needed to have them in order to be able to answer the questions about link complex assembly and its regulation that interested me, I decided to take the analytical quantitative light microscopy course at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, when I was a newly hired assistant professor at UMN. This amazing course gave me the exposure to theory and hands-on practice of quantitative imaging that I needed to be able to embark on this new research path in biophysics. I absolutely fell in love with this amazing community of national and international researchers. So when I got the opportunity to apply to be able to spend the summer of 2018 working together with Dr. Edgar Gomes, who was the postdoc that uh, set me on this path of studying nuclear, nuclear movement in the first place in Dr. Gunderson's lab, uh, he's in the IMM in Portugal, um, Dr. Claire Waterman from the NIH, Dr. Bob Goldman, from Northwestern on several nuclear cell biology projects that I, I jumped at this chance. I was super excited. And I was beyond thrilled and humbled to be named an MBL Early Career Whitman Fellow, which enabled me to do this. During my time at the MBL that summer, I reconnected with Dr. Fred Chang, who uh, was a professor at Columbia when I was a postdoc there and is now a professor at UCSF. And I also met Dr. Liam Holt, who's at NYU. Ultimately, the conversations that we had together that summer helped propel me into a new research direction, understanding how nuclear cytoskeletal coupling influences the molecular crowding and mechanical properties of the cytoplasm. In 2020, I was invited by the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group to apply to become an Allen Distinguished Investigator based on my research in nuclear cell biology. My good friend and long-term collaborator, Dr. Dan Starr, uh, who was was also invited to apply. He's a professor at UC Davis. So ultimately we decided to go in together and write a joint application designed to investigate several fundamental questions about the mechanisms of link complex dependent mechanotransduction or the ability of cells to sense and respond to mechanical cues. Apparently, our combined strengths in developmental genetics and biophysical approaches were exciting enough to enable us to be uh, named one of three groups of two PIs who were uh, Allen Distinguished Investigators that year. Because of this fantastic opportunity, Dr. Starr and I were able to physically join our labs. And in 2020, we launched the interdisciplinary Star Luxton Lab in the Department of Molecular and Cellular Biology at UC Davis. Over the past two years, we've assembled an awesome research team consisting of technicians, undergrads, grad students, and postdocs, and we continue to be obsessed with the nucleus. 
we are super excited uh, in particular about our new foray into studying how link complex dependent nuclear cytoskeletal coupling determines the mechanical properties of neurons in health and disease. And so just to sum up here, I think there's about three themes uh, or a recipe that at least for me has uh, enabled me to really enjoy um, my path, my random walk towards being a biophysicist. I've always been obsessed with question-driven science and I continue to be so today. I find interdisciplinary work to be extraordinarily uh, fulfilling. And I like to work at the interface of uh, cell biology, biophysics and biomedical engineering. But probably my most exciting and most addictive um, aspect or theme of my random walk in uh, towards biophysics has been collaborative research. People really are the key. And um, I couldn't do it without all the people who have helped me along the way. And with that, I'll stop because I know we're going over time and I'm happy to take questions. Great. Thank you again, Grant, and um, Paula, uh, plotting on behalf of the audience. Um, thank you for one of the full series of talks today. And I believe um, we've gone over time a little bit, so I'll pass it over to Sri to, to close us out. Uh, thanks again for a very inspiring talk, uh, Gant. I think uh, you have left the audience speechless. <laughs> <laughs> but I will give you a moment to pontificate on that alternate future having been a music, what was it? Music and composition. I wanted to write film scores. But wow. I decided I liked eating a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note. Ironic, but, yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you again, and I'm closing the recording.